Hi everyone, welcome back to Lola's Frugal Life Podcast. I hope my um, voice holds out in this episode because I actually have a cold right now and my voice was completely really like rough sounding this morning. I feel like it's a little bit better right now. So hopefully I can make it through this episode. It's I think going to be kind of a short one anyway. Um, but so today what I wanted to talk about was consistency versus intensity in achieving your goals. So I was listening to a podcast, I don't know, maybe like a week or so ago, and the person being interviewed brought up this idea of considering consistency versus intensity as it relates to health and wellness goals. And I had never really thought about the relationship between the two before, but it made so much sense to me. And the more I thought about it, the more I thought of examples of how this applies to so many areas of our lives that we might be trying to improve or make changes to, whether that be our finances or our time management or our health or whatever things we might be trying to work on. And I say like in in achieving your goals, but I mean, you know, everything doesn't have to be identified as a goal. It could just be whatever things, whatever changes you're trying to make, Um, improving your routines, improving your habits, just trying to improve um, certain areas of your life. This really can be applied to most anything that you're trying to make changes to. So the whole thing is to kind of think about, um, you can probably think of some examples that demonstrate the adverse relationship between intensity and consistency. The more intense you are in an activity that you're pursuing, the less likely you're gonna be consistent in that activity. So that's why when we try to make drastic life changes, we don't often stick to them because they're just too intense of a change. We're trying to push ourselves too hard. So instead of making improvements, we end up staying the same. Instead of doing something to get us closer to where we want to be, we go real hard for a short period of time and then often wind up quitting. So while we might think we're doing good by pushing ourselves hard, we oftentimes would have been better off by going less intense and making a change that we can actually stick to. And the thing is, you also have to remember that the level of intensity that is um, that we can handle varies by person. When we're trying to make changes in our lives, we have to consider our own personal situation and what would be considered intense for us. This is similar to how when we talked a couple weeks ago about setting goals, we want to make sure they're realistic to our current life situation. It's the same thing with any changes you're trying to make in making sure that the intensity that you set yourself um, for what you want to change is not too intense for you, even though it might be, it might not be too intense for someone else, but it might be too intense for you. So you really have to consider where you're at in your life and what intensity makes the most sense for your situation. There's a balance. You want some intensity because you wanna be pushing a little bit, but you don't wanna push so hard that you wind up just completely stopping. So like an example I can think of of how, um, you know, one level of intensity might make sense for someone, but not for someone else. So for example, I plan my meals for every night of the week. So if I had a goal to make a change, which would include making sure each week my meal plan included trying one new recipe, that wouldn't really be too much of an intense change for me because I'm already planning every night. I have the meal planning thing down. It would just be a matter of saying, okay, each week one of these meals needs to be a new recipe that I haven't tried before. So it would be a little bit of a push, but not like too much of a dramatic change from what I'm already doing. However, if you currently never meal plan and you decide that going forward, you're gonna start meal planning every single day of the week and also making sure that you include one new recipe per week in your meal plan, that would be a pretty intense change to go from never meal planning at all to planning every single day and then also making sure one of those is a new Uh, new recipe that you're going to try every week. You're probably not going to stick to that because that's a huge change. And it doesn't mean you couldn't have that as like a long-term goal, but it does mean that you wouldn't want to start with a change like that for your lifestyle that's so intense. Maybe you might want to start with planning two meals per week using recipes that you're already familiar with. And then over time, you could make another couple of days and another couple of days until you're meal planning every day and then make that final change. So it all depends on where you're currently at in your situation because a small change for one person can be an intense change for someone else if it includes a lot of other things that you're not already doing or at a level that you're not currently at. 
So, you know, many of us have experienced New Year's resolutions that get completely forgotten about, often by mid-January. And the reason we often fail at New Year's resolutions is because they often center around goals that are way too intense for our current lifestyle. That is why gyms are often jam-packed during the first few weeks of the new year and then the crowd starts to dwindle. It's not that those people did not have good intentions, they just most likely were trying to make changes that were way too intense. If you haven't been working out in years, it might be a bit much to set a goal to work out at a gym five days a week. Maybe try going there one or two times a week. Might be a little bit more realistic to start and then you can increase it from there. But what happens is we get ourselves really excited about making improvements and we expect ourselves to make these drastic changes in our lives and be able to stick with them. And while some of us might have the stamina and motivation to stick with those drastic changes like that, but for most of us, we're going to be much more likely to stick with something long term if the intensity um, of the change is much lower. It's not that you don't wanna push yourself some, but by pushing too hard, it's just gonna make it difficult to stick with the change and then you're likely gonna burn out. And as we all know, consistency is key when we're trying to make changes to any area of our life, whether that be our health, our finances, housekeeping, whatever it is that you wanna make changes to, you wanna be able to make changes that you will be consistent with. So that requires patience. You can't just say, I'm doing nothing, I'm going to do everything starting tomorrow. You need to be patient and make the changes slow so that you can stick with them. They have to be at an intensity in an, at an intensity that makes sense for you so that while you're doing that little bit of a push and making a change, it's going to happen slowly because you need to make that change at a level that you'll stick to. We, we need to remind ourselves that making those small changes that we will actually continue to do on a consistent basis is much better than making these intense changes that end up getting put on hold and then eventually forgotten about. So when you're trying to make a change in your life, think about making changes in a way that you'll be really pretty confident that you'll, you will be able to be consistent with. It can be really fun to think of these drastic changes and say, for now on, I'm going to do whatever this unreasonable thing is that you've thought about. Um, But really, if we want to have long-term success, it's really important to come back to reality and make sure that whatever changes we are making, we'll be able to stick with them consistently. Because if we can stick with them consistently, they'll become part of our routines and part of our lifestyle, and then we can always improve on them from that point. And of course, like with everything else, this is really just another example of how small changes can get us a lot closer to where we want to be than trying to make drastic changes in our lives. You do need to be patient, but you just can remind yourself that you're making progress. Like always, progress is always better than perfection. When we try to wait until we can get to a point that we can definitely do it perfectly, we've wasted so much time that we could have been making continuous progress. And also, it's very likely that you're never even gonna get to that point where you could do something 100% perfectly. And then in that case, you get nowhere because you're just waiting around for this perfect situation. So you wanna make sure you acknowledge yourself for those small changes that you make in your life. And remember that those are what help you get to where you wanna be. You, you're gonna end up making big changes in the long run by making those smaller changes on a continuous basis. So always remember to, to keep making small changes that you can stick with and really try and stay away from those really intense changes because they often are not things that we're able to maintain and then we forget about them and they're just completely gone. It, we, we just kind of often will slow down on them and then completely stop and then we completely forget about them. So really focus on making smaller changes that have a reasonable amount of intensity so you are making progress, but make sure that you can be consistent with them. So that's all I have to say about this topic today. I know this is kind of a shorter episode, but I just really loved the idea of thinking of it that way because I think it makes so much sense. And it turns out it's good for a shorter episode today anyway because my voice is, like I said, it's feeling a little bit scratchy today. So I'm not sure how much talking I can actually do in this episode. So thank you so much for listening and I will see you back here again next week. 
So thank you for checking in for this podcast episode. And don't forget, you can always email me with any questions or suggestions at lolasfrugallife at gmail.com. You can follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Lola's Frugal Life. And you can find a blog post for most of my episodes and definitely all of my meal plan episodes at lolasfrugallife.com. You can also join our private listeners group at facebook.com slash groups slash lolasfrugallife. And if you enjoy the show, please make sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you listen from. And I would love it if you would screenshot the show and tag me on Instagram so I could see your listening. Also, if you can please take a couple of seconds to rate and review the podcast, those ratings and reviews are what help the show come up better in search results so that other people can find this podcast. So that will really help me in growing my audience. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for listening and I hope you have an awesome day.